Good morning, welcome back to another episode here at uh, Harbour, where we fit in the kitchen. So today's job then is going to be to do all the uh, all the panels. We're blue this side and we're grey this side. So grey panels here and here, where the uh, American fridge fridge is going. Uh, American fridge freezer, sorry. And the panel on the end there. There's a panel on the end of that one, which is the end of the coat cupboard. And there'll be a panel on the end of this one, which is a border cupboard. I've got to construct a um, top here for the dishwasher, which we've got in there. And there'll be a blue base end panel there as well to finish that off. That's where the dishwasher will go. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll go through as, as I go. I'll talk about how I'm going to do my scribes. And then uh, we'll see how much we get done today. Let's get on with it then. Okay, so we'll do this one first. I'll measure from the floor to the top. And that's 21.30. And then what I've looked at, because I want to run the um, the cut the pelmet, always get them mixed up, corners and pelmet, always pelmet on the top of there, into the side of it. There's my uh, pelmet there, 35 mil thick, because I've put it flat on the top and uh, sticking down in its entirety on the uh, on the bottom of the wall cupboards. So I'm gonna come five mil above, so I'm going 40 mil above the top of that, and then I'll run that into it. it just looks tidier. Top box comes out flush with this anyway, so I can just run it all the way across. On its like downside is there's going to be a join, but um, it is what it is. I'll get on with these. All I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut the height of this off first. Then what I'll do is I'll put my panel against the wall. I'll show you all this in a minute. Put the panel against the wall. And then I then set out past here the thickness of my door plus two mil. The two mil is accounting for the gap that you have from the back of your door to the face of the cupboard, which is your hinge so it doesn't bind. So that's what I tend to do anyway. And I'll set it forward. I always put more panels to the face of the door, not the face of the cupboard. It just looks a lot nicer. So uh, I'll set myself up and then we'll start doing that. There's a, if I go in closer, there's a little bit, it's touching the wall, this is the existing wall. So we bonded and skinned that in a little bit better, but there is still a slight two mil gap there, you can just about see, and one at the top there. So I've leveled it in, that's level. So I'm going to step back now and put this down. So I've leveled it in now. I'm parallel to my cupboard, so go parallel to your cupboard, which I've done. It's, that's important because you're not cutting this edge. Make sure this is piled onto that one. So I'm for the minute on 45 mil, sticking past. Now, if you remember, I talked about the door thickness, minor 20 mil. I want a two mil um, firm that, so I want 22 mil. So I tend to get my little, little combination square, set that to 22 mil. And then what I do is, um, I look at what I've got there, in this case, 45 mil. So that's 23 mil. So I'll set my scribe up now, and I'll scribe against the wall, 23 mil. So when I cut it and push it in against the wall, I lose the, the gaps won't be there anymore because I scribed it in. And I'll still be 22 minutes away from this door, uh, this um, the frame, the cupboard. So I should do that now. Um, you can watch me do that. I'll turn the music back on. So, And then uh, we'll carry on. Let's get my scribe, which is, uh, I've got a trend, a trend scribe tool. And uh, I'll talk to that with you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use my scribing tool. Now I'm not at this long. It's called Easy Scribe, made by Trend. It comes with uh, this little case, and it's got, uh, you won't be able to see it very well, but just there is um, a lead, a flat lead, which you can change into changeable. And in the kit is one I bought it. There's uh, another three leads in there. So all you do with this is you, you set from the blade to the, as, as you look at it, to the right hand side of this flat blade. So that's your full thickness then. And then you, you just turn that wheel there 
to open this jaw up to set your distance. And then you sit this flat on your floor then and run it down the wall. Um, and then that gives you strong. I always used to use a block of wood. I used to cut a block of wood um, that I wanted 23 miles. Just cut one on the saw quick and then run my pencil against it. But this just seems more efficient, so I thought I'd give it a go. First time using it, hence it's uh, quite clean. But uh, I bought this probably about two months ago. I haven't had a chance to use it yet. But uh, So I'll have to give it a go, see how, uh, see how it goes. So it's a little bit awkward. You don't get it just right because the lead's flat. It doesn't roll like a normal pencil would because it's flat. So you have to get the angle just right on it. And it sticks. So it's not as quick, but it certainly seems pretty accurate. Just unplug this extension here for a minute. I must plug it back in because it's the boiler for now. Once Sparky comes back. So that's it. I'll join that up now because I can't get in because the plug. But um, I'll put that back in before I forget. Oh. So there we are. That now that line will mimic the um, what is the wall, and then we'll lose that we'll lose that gap then. And when we push it in, we'll still have. 22 mil remained in there because that's been scrubbed at 23 mil and that's 45. So, uh, so there we go, push that in, see how we fit. Excuse the uh, fan of the charger there. But, uh, full disclosure, I tried it first, obviously. It wouldn't be YouTube if I didn't have the opportunity to uh, try it first, so that makes it look stupid. So, uh, yeah. So what I've done is, that's all cut now. And as you can see, that's all nice and tight to the wall all the way down. Nice and tight now. Um, in this option, because now it's a solid wall, I've just give the, give the board a tap against the wall just to seat it a bit better. Just be careful though in case you crack the laminate and if it's plasterboard don't do it because you'll crack the plaster then it'll be really bad and then as i said 22 mil set on my uh, square and all you do then just check that then that's right on there now right on the on the down there check it down the bottom as well that's right on it there as well look so cupboard's level so we know the panel's level so fix it in place with the clamp and then all i'll do then is i'll put my screws behind my hinge holes there so you can't see them and i'll put a couple at the back uh, I don't know where the shelves are going, so I'll put it behind shelves, but I'll put them at the back and they're like a, a brass goldy screw anyway. So I'll screw that one in place and then we'll move on to these two. Now, now I'll just same process, cut the height off. I am going to do it the same as that, I think, and put separate sinks. I think it will look quite nice looking at it. So I'll do that now. Somebody's at the door. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I uh, carried on, got all the panels fitted, apart from this one and that in where the washer is. I didn't have to show you how to do this one, how, 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 not how to do it, how I do it, should I say, sorry. I don't want to presume that I'm, I'm, the, uh, I'm the only one that knows how to do them, because I don't. At the step, that's just how I do them. Um, so I've got these two, these two panels in as well, which has allowed me then to get the top box in. Um, that went in lovely. I put the end panel on the, uh, the cupboard here as well. That's all on. And as I say, I've set mine 22 mil. 22 mil past the face, so it's 20 mil door, two mil for the hinge. Um, I'm waiting for, they sent me a panel, but um, miscommunication, it's the same height as the as this the other one, but I wanted one all the way to see to mask that, and then I'll mask the face off. So I'll probably use that one there now to fill this bit in. 
That's going to uh, get shelved out. That puts your little shelf on there, so that'll be done. That'll look nice and tidy. I've done all the only differences with these ones is I've run just like I did there, higher there, lower and higher there. Exactly the same. Up the top there, 40 mil, drop them two below, and then 40 mil. Only difference then is because I've got the um, the cornish is going vertical rather than horizontal or flat, whatever you want to call it. It's 60 mil, so that's 65 mil, that distance there. So when I butt it against that, it'll leave like a, a five mil sort of shadow gap there. So that's the only difference. Same across here, 65 mil lower. Just dropped it at the top there. So yeah, that's done. What I'll do now is I'm gonna put this um, this big panel on. This is the uh, worrying one now, because you've only got one shot with this one. And it's a couple of hundred pound panel. So uh, here we go. So have a look at this one. Hello, good morning. We've gone to the next day now. I didn't film much yesterday because, as I said to you, I was only putting these panels on. And when I showed you how to do, or how, how I do this one, it's all much of a muchness. Um, the only thing I did do extra to that is I cut these scribes to height because Chase had already cut them to width for me. That's to height. Uh, and then I set this. What Chase also did for me is I've got a panel for the dishwasher, above the dishwasher, and obviously a decorative end panel for that. So the only thing to remember, if you do put anything above your dishwasher like I have, is when you use the template for your appliance door, is you drop your door down 18 mil, like that, because your dishwasher will be 18 mil lower. Because normally what you do is you set your dishwasher to under underside of your worktop, and then that's what the uh, appliance jig's for. But I've got an ultra mine for that. But it looks nicer because it gives you something to fix your dishwasher to, especially in this case where it's quartz. So that's what I'm going to do. What I'm doing now is uh, I'm going to sort the plumbing out in here, turn the water off and do that. Get the standpiping ready for the washer. Then chase remember this big chunky shelf to put in there for, a, for put the dryer on. That is substantial. Hi, and welcome to Tool Time. If you're struggling in the corner to cut a bit of pipe, get one of these. Right, do you have the other? over? You can't take the mick at yourself. Then you need to uh, have a word, because you've got to have a laugh at work, in you? So, all I wanted to show is, I'm just cutting the, doing the plumbing now. I've got to get in this corner for the standpipe, and it, it's a lot easier to use one of these um, plastic pipe cutters. Um, they're very, very similar, in fact, exactly the same process as the, the standard pipe cutters for copper pipe, but it cuts plastic. This is for 40 mil, you can get 32 mil, and I think you can get 51, 51 mil as well, or 50 mil. Um, and it just makes it easier when you're right in the corner there, you've only got to give it a couple of turns and it's done. So if I, like that for example, turn it the right way, two turns and it's, and it's off, great bit of kit. You can replace the blades in it as well. So uh, it's ideal for this scenario if you're getting in tight spaces or whatever. I've used it all on this job, so I've had it about 12 months, I haven't replaced the blade yet. I'm not a plumber, so I don't use it all the time. Uh, but yeah, great bit of kit. Nice bit of tool time for you. So, the downside to joviality at work. When I was messing about cutting this. Cut it too short. See, I always put things out on this channel when I can. If we've cocked up, I always do. There we go. So I think I'll fetch a coupler. Extend that. Yeah, mess about at work, but you've got to pay attention. And I didn't. Right, I'm putting the uh, shelves in this cup's cabinet now. Screwing all this in, that's all in. And what Chase have done is to give some rigidity and some structure to this, because it's 1200 wide, and to support the shelf, apart from the center piece, which is going to be, in effect, that in the center. And out a little bit, there we go. That's gonna be in the center there, and I'll cut these to height, that'll support the center. They've also put these, uh, these cams in, so I put these in there and all I do is drill these little little studs in, these things there, into the sides. And then when you turn it, it clamps it in. And there's two at the back as well, just to clamp it all together. I've got three shelves in total, so I'll uh, put them in. And then we'll, uh, I'll show you how it looks when we're finished. Okay, so the cook's cabinet's all done now. So as I said, you just set your cams out and the cams go under there. So that's just, uh, that's all you see. So quite uh, quite nice really, just, just quite tidy looking. And these are all sort of glued, glued in and then screwed from the top. And I put a veneer pin in the front, which you struggle to see if I'm honest with you. No, I can't see it. <coughs> so that's done, that's all screwed. Put the shelves in here, set the shelves in here. 
we uh, had a talk with the customers this morning and we've ascertained where we want all these shelves. So that's for ironing board and that's for some uh, boxes down there with blankets and things in for outside. So that's all good to go now. Roasting tins, so the only good thing about Chase is that they haven't got loads of holes in them, which means it doesn't look unsightly with loads of little holes all in your cupboard, which I prefer, especially when it's grain like this one. So that looks a lot tidier. So I put these in myself. I know they're all good to go, all level. So there we are, and plus you can set them, which is brill. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna go through setting out drawers, and it's the best way to, to start with your first one, really. Because again, what Chase have done, they've got an option when you're doing in cupboard um, drawer set like this. And what they've done is, they've created, let me just get these on the bench. They've done is they've created with a CNC um, a nice uh, a nice drawer front to match the carcass. So use the same carcass colour, and I'll fix these onto the front. And all they do is is we just pop these uh, these pegs out as I show you, and then these just clip into a, a bracket that's fixed onto the face of the inside of the drawer front, and they just clip in. And these are just soft closed drawer boxes, like that. As always. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and the notification bell ready for the next episode.